Hello students. Today we are discussing about some figures of speech. Before entering into the video, please do like, share and subscribe my channel. Okay, let's start with figures of speech. First one is seguma. Seguma is a verb which is which came from Greek language and the meaning of seguma is bounding. This is a verb through which we are connecting two sentences. For example, he, he opened his heart and wallet every time when he went with her. In this in this one these two uh, two sentences are connected with the, connect sorry these two sentence uh, two sentences are connected through one verb another example is i lost my coat and temper here i lo lost my coat and I lost my temper. Two different sentences are there, which were connected with the, with the with the verb and. Next figure figure of speech is anaphora. Anaphora is a certain uh, a phrase or word that. That are going to repeat at the beginning of every successive line. It was the, for example, it was the best of time, it was the worst of time. It was a, an age of belief and it was, it was an age of foolishness. Here, I, at the, so in the, in the success, in the continuous lines, at the beginning of every line, the words it was the these three words were continuously used this is called anaphora certain phrase or words are used to repeat at the beginning of every successive line another example is this example is from tinder abbey five years have passed five summers five long years Again and again, the word five came here. So, this is called anaphora. And this anaphora is opposite to epiphora. In epiphora, what happens is, this repetition comes, in the, uh, comes at the last of the line. Example, the government of the people, by the people, for the people. So, the people, these two words comes at the last of the line. This is epiphora. Actually, this anaphora use the feeling or pathos of audience. It gives a continuation in the line. So, it also gives a sense of uh, anticipation. We are anticipating or, or we are expecting what to come in the next line. This is the use of anaphora. Next to figure of speech is antithesis. Antithesis, we know that uh, we are uh, getting the impression of two opposite ideas. In, in this one, they are, we are using words that are opposite and very dif different. But these are used for highlighting contrasting ideas. Two, we are using words to uh, give two opposite ideas. Example, that one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Here, one small step and one giant leap. These two are two opposite ideas. But these two are combined to give uh, a contrasting ideas. A small step for ordinary people, but it's a great step for human uh, mankind. 
for for uh, sorry for whole human nature it's a great step this is antithesis another example is to err is human but to forgive is divine so here err and divine are two opposite words but these are joined together to give there a contrasting idea an opposite idea next figure of speech is apostrophe apostrophe is uh, when uh, it, this happens when a character either a character either an object idea or imaginary person if they were in the room and that another character is talking to them in the disguise that there is uh, someone is in the room this is uh, different from personification in personification we are giving human qualities to animals but uh, in apostrophe we are expecting or thinking that there is uh, some someone is in the room or beside us and we are uh, talking to them it may be a person or it may be an animal or uh, some object in example in frankenstein only apostrophe is used because frankenstein is uh, talking to clouds stars winds mountains he never says that he is talking to any persons in uh, in uh, frankenstein they are using the figure of speech like uh, apostrophe in the in the expectation that um he is talking to some in uh, objects or clouds or stars next one is bathos bathos is uh, like we are uh, the whole uh, work or the or any whole po poem is uh, written in a very good manner but at the end of the um, that poem we we will expect a good ending or a great ending but suddenly they will write it in a very ridiculous manner this is called bathos and we are the anti climax will not be like what we expected it will be like a foolish in, a, in it will be like in a foolish way bathos is a sudden change of tone in writing usual uh, uh, writing in a usual way from sub sublime to ridiculous sublime means a great poetry or a great work from a sublime way to it or uh, suddenly it comes to an uh, to a cheap way or a ridiculous way and decline and climax is happen this is actually this is not bathos is not and climax and what is and climax is when we expect something and there happens an opposite one that is and climax but in bathos sublime or great work suddenly changes to vulgar climax this is bathos a uh, great uh, for uh, one uh, important example is enoch arden the ending of the enoch arden became in a very um, cheap manner and this type of uh, figure of figure of speech like bathos was not liked by the great poet alexander pope next figure of speech the which is very important that is synec doc synec doc is part for whole and whole for part for example um instead of using the word car i may use it as four wheels so this is synec doc part is used instead of whole 
or hall is used instead of part. 50 sails for 50 ships. This is the best example. They may say that 50 sails instead of saying 50 ships. Another example is look at my new set of wheels. Or another example is 100 hungry mouths to feed. That means I have to feed 100 people. But Sinek Dock is entirely different from metonymy. Metonymy is, it is linked to a thing. But it is not a part or, or it is not a whole. Like uh, met, uh, example of metonymy is crown for queen. When we are talking about crown, the idea is there is a queen. This is metonymy. Metonymy is not talking about any part of a particular thing or any whole of a particular thing. Next one is oxymoron. Oxymoron is um, happens when two contradictory words are brought together in one phrase. Two different contradictory words are used in a one used within one line. For example, a beautiful tyrant or paid social worker. These two uh, words are entirely different, but these two are joined together. This is called oxymoron. Next is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is the effect of giving some uh, sounds. In a work. A way to create sound in a work. Like the writer may write like a um, crumbling, bowling or barking of a dog etc. etc. It all will give the effect that a sound is, is happening there. There may be animal sounds like dogs bark, cats mewing or whispering of wind. All these are examples of onomatopoeia. The buzzing bee flew away. Here the writer is telling us that a bee was there. How he gave that impression? Through using the word buzzing. The buzzing bee flew away. Another example is from Emily Dickinson's work. I heard a fly bus. Sorry, I heard a fly bus when I die. This is another example of onomatopoeia. And a great, uh, and, and the next figure of speech is synesthesia. Synesthesia is, is uh, another sorry I know opposite form of anesthesia it came from the word anesthesia in this synesthesia we are uh, using two or more senses this is synesthesia this is a method adopted to present ideas or characters and places in such a manner that they appeal to more senses more than one sense uh, uh, more than one sense we are using um, two or the more uh, two or three senses at the same time it's a medical condition when one of the five sensen senses are simultaneously works together. It is called synesthesia. When a child affected with synesthesia, he reads 
and smells bad smell um this <clears throat> this synesthesia happens when different parts of brain works together and simultaneously for example i smell trouble this is the best example here i can and uh, expect a problem and also i can smell uh, uh, here i am using uh, two senses like my brain and and my nose another one is life taste good or green eyed monster green eyed monster here means through this uh, green eyed we can say that we are using our eye to look at him but we can also think that he is a jealous one so here we are using our brain and eye two senses are used here next of speech figure of speech is juxta juxtaposition here two contradictory qualities are placed together in one sentence or two contradictory images are side by side this is uh, juxtaposition uh, in the poem paradise lost frequently we are using good and bad qualities god and ba uh, badness of satan are placed together in paradise lost so two uh, opposite images are joined here and another example is just the best of time just the worst of time this is this is also an example of uh, just a position then next is prolepsis prolepsis placing information about the ending of the story near the beginning beginning tells the end for example uh, in hamlet Horatio am dead this is the best example of prolepsis in this one uh, from the in the starting itself the writer is talk, telling about the ending of the story audience need not uh, anticipate anything it's it, the ending is itself in the beginning this is prolepsis okay thank you